Hmm? Well, we uh, do this every semester at the end of the semester. And uh, all good things must come to a close. We have, we have completed the first half of the book of Acts. And next semester, the spring semester, we plan to continue on with the last half of the book of Acts. Even more exciting than the first half, if you can believe that. Uh, but it will be a great time. We will begin, the Lord willing, on January 16th. January 16th, Tuesday night, and then, of course, on Wednesday the 17th for our Wednesday uh, session. So, uh, Dr. Baskin is the chairman of the steering committee of the School of Tyrannus and uh, has been with us uh, since our inception some seven years ago. Has it been that long? We uh, are this time completing <coughs> the 14th semester, the 14th semester of the School of Tyrannus uh, ministry. And next semester will be our 15th semester. So uh, we are really issuing two <clears throat> kinds of uh, certificates of achievement tonight. <coughs> One is uh, for the completions, the satisfactory completion of the the satisfactory completion of the uh, semester, uh, part one of uh, the Book of Acts, and in addition to that, we are presenting uh, a couple of ten semester certificates. That is, some of our people have already completed ten full semesters, and last semester we handed out uh, five of these ten semester uh, certificates. Tonight there are three recipients, two of whom are here tonight. And we'll be uh, presenting those as well. Now, next semester, be our 15th semester, we uh, anticipate uh, presenting 15 semester certificates. Uh, so, if you uh, if you have completed uh, by by that time uh, 15 semesters, we plan to hand out. Uh, the 15 semester certificates. That's a real achievement, I believe, to have accomplished 10 semesters, 15 semesters of the study of the Word of God. And it should indeed be recognized. All right. Um, we have here, uh, to begin with, Bob Dooley. Bob has been faithful in uh, our song leading and, and music work here, as well as very faithful in, uh, in bringing his uh, tribe and family uh, with him as well uh, to our classes. We appreciate that very much. <coughs> Uh, Kathy Doolin, would you step forward, please? Kathy, thank you so much. Congratulations. And uh, Kathy has been faithful. She is uh, not only a student of the Bible, but a horsewoman as well, uh, along with her family, and we appreciate that. Kimberly Doolin. Congratulations, Kimberly. Kimberly also is uh, uh, shows horses as well as studies the word and. Uh, 
she uh, she is, goes to these national events as well. And more human. Now, Mark has uh, been at our uh, laptop that is in communication with what? The high up, the high band, or the low band? High band, usually. High band, usually. And uh, has been in communication with our web students, and we appreciate his work uh, very much. Virginia Anderson. Virginia has been so faithful. How many uh, semesters uh, do you think? Well, if it's not 10, it's almost. <laughs> How many? Almost 10? Yeah. yeah. All right. Very good. Well, uh, we'll, we'll let us know for sure, and we'll make sure you get one of these uh, 10 certificate certificates. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. And... Uh, Pretty basket. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dr. Grady uh, has, has been so faithful, and, and uh, uh, as the chairman of our uh, steering committee, and uh, words cannot say how much uh, the baskets have meant to, to us personally and, and as a ministry. And uh, by the way, he keep, cooks a mean uh, brisket. Too. Uh, we have experienced <laughs> very good, but he loves the Lord, and um, we have really appreciated his co laborship with us. I want to say a word about Grady Baskin. He couldn't be with us tonight, he had a kind of a family hey, emergency. Mom? Yes. Clarify. You better clarify. Get Brady Baskin. Junior. 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 Sorry. Brady Baskin <laughs> is uh, this is this happens to be senior. You never know it, <clears throat> but uh, he's a senior. Um, Brady Baskin Junior uh, is related to uh, Brady Baskin Senior. Uh, Doctor Baskin. What a shock. From from a very early age, uh, <laughs> but anyway, Grady uh, Jr. has been uh, really uh, the one who has set up all of this uh, internet connection and and the uh, cameras and and works our internet and and uh, he has really been faithful in that. Sorry, he couldn't be with us tonight. And he's going to uh, get us some new interviews in a couple of weeks, right? Yes. Uh, He's the one that uh, takes our interviews and uh, with with uh, the various leaders, and uh, we got the uh, pre-trib conference coming up this next weekend, and um, so he'll be with us there uh, to do some some more interviews, and we're looking forward to that. Yes. Marilyn Haddon. Laura B. Haddon and Marilyn Haddon. Marilyn Shot. Is that true of her husband as well? Congratulations. Congratulations. Judge Roby Haddon uh, and Marilyn have been faithful with us uh, all through the years and uh, in, in many of our classes, and we, we sure appreciate their counsel and uh, fellowship in the work. Lindy Hubble. Lindy is part of the Hubble Gooling tribe uh, family and uh, very artistic and has been a big help to us in many ways uh, 
in our ministry here and in our work. Thank you so much. Megan Hunt. Now, you'd think she was uh, St. Nicholas uh, tonight. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> she is also part of that wonderful family and has been uh, very faithful in the study of the Word and fellowship with us. Mary Cranky. And Bill Crappy. Congratulations. Mary and Bill have been very good friends. Mary is a walking evangelist in the malls and uh, often has an opportunity to witness for the Lord Jesus. Uh, she and Bill are big in Bible study fellowship as well. And uh, I have, they have. Uh, been a blessing to us as we have studied the Word of God together. Thank you so much. Bob MacArthur and Mary MacArthur. Tell a story about you one of these days. Uh-oh. <laughs> you want to come up here and tell it? <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Better be careful. Yeah, I know that. Uh, and uh, they, uh, they're in our Wednesday class, by the way, and uh, wanted to be with us tonight for the sharing of the certificates, and we're so glad uh, that they've been with us. Carolyn McCall. Congratulations. Uh, Carolyn is uh, my best friend, and she's my glory, and she's my wife, and she keeps me out of trouble. I try. <laughs> She's got a big job. And she makes the best pot of coffee in the world. I agree with that. <laughs> Dewey and Kathy Rice. Congratulations. Kathy and Dewey have been good friends through the years, been in our Sunday class as well as our School of Tyrannus, and uh, they're in charge of our prayer uh, lists and, and keeping people informed about prayer needs. We certainly do appreciate uh, their ministry with us. Uh, and now, uh, if anybody should have gotten a certificate and we didn't have it tonight, please let me know. We don't want to miss anybody that... Uh, earned a certificate. Oh, there's. Yeah, we got it in here. We've got it in here. Hold on. Bear with us for a minute. <laughs> Patrick? Patrick wasn't here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Didn't this happen once before or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, nobody got Pamela Thompson's, Pam Thompson's uh, certificate, didn't it? Don't know what happened to it. I know we had wait, it. Wait a minute. There's three here. Pam Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> Double shelf. 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 And uh, has been very, very good. Uh, now we, we come to the 10 semester certificates, and we have two to present tonight. Uh, first is Bob Dewan. Congratulations. Uh, when did you start? It was uh, back? I think my first class was typology. Typology uh, and has been with us ever since. Yeah. All right. Thank you for your faithfulness, Bob. And Mark Goodwin. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Very much. Mark, we've already said he's uh, been at the laptop and communicating in the chat room with uh, our web students, and we appreciate that very much. What? The what? Ten semester. Ten semester? We, we gave out five last semester. You were one of them. Ten semester? Yes. Yes. And then now we're just giving out, we're giving out three this, this time. I don't remember these. Okay. <laughs> if, if you don't have it, we'll get you one. Uh, sister wants it. He does want it. Go ahead and mention so we'll get it to him. And, and also, uh, Tester Vaughn. Uh, and we will we'll furnish that certificate for you next time. Uh, we made a mistake. So, sorry about that. Once in a while we slip up. Is that right, Pam? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and thank you so much, uh, Dr. Baskin, for uh, working with us on this. And let's see, can we... Turn the camera as if we need you just a second in this direction. Well, we come now to uh, what we call uh, the sugar stick. Still getting cameras fixed here, though. Sugar stick. That's uh, a little something extra uh, from the scriptures that uh, <clears throat> we might not touch on in our regular classes, but have been a, a, a blessing to me and uh, we want to share it with you. Well, of course, we're, we're approaching Christmas time and the celebration of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, His incarnation. And uh, on a number of occasions for our sugar stick, we have taken some aspect of the birth of the Lord uh, to look at and study. But uh, actually, uh, as you know, there's not, nothing in the scriptures that indicates the date of the birth of Jesus. Uh, and the identification of December 25 has been somewhat arbitrary. 
And for that reason, some, some uh, Christians don't like to celebrate Christmas. I don't join them in that. Uh, I like to celebrate Christmas, and I'm glad that at least a, a sizable portion of the world uh, takes an opportunity to celebrate the birth of Jesus with us who are believers. As far as I'm concerned, we could have every day Christmas. Uh, you like that too. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, <clears throat> to celebrate the birth of the Lord. But again, we don't know exactly when during the year uh, he was born. However, there is a biblical celebration that is celebrated very close to the time of uh, when we celebrate Christmas. And that is the Feast of Hanukkah. Hanukkah. And <clears throat> do you know that the Feast of Hanukkah is mentioned only one time in the Bible? And where do you suppose that is? Where is the Feast of Hanukkah mentioned in the Bible? Uh, Something about Jesus. Jesus went... Jesus celebrated. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's in the New Testament. Festival of Light or something yeah. like that. That's in the New Testament. Yes. But I thought that Hanukkah was a Jewish feast. But you know, it is never mentioned in the Old Testament. It didn't happen until after that. Because, yes, that's exactly right. It did not happen until after the Old Testament was completed. It is the events of the Feast of Hanukkah are prophesied in the Old Testament as a future coming event. But they are not recorded as history. They are prophesied as something in the future. Well, where in the Bible then is Hanukkah actually mentioned? It's mentioned in the book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 10 and verse 22. John, tw John 10, 22. It says, And it was at Jerusalem the feast of the dedication. And it was Winter. <clears throat> the feast of the dedication. Well, what does that say about Hanukkah? Well, that is what Hanukkah means. Hanukkah means dedication. Dedication uh, to the Lord. Dedication. And, and so this is a translation of the term. And it was at Jerusalem... The feast of the dedication, and it was winter, and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. So, the only place where the feast of Hanukkah is mentioned in all the Bible, Old or New Testament, is in John 10. And it speaks of Jesus uh, celebrating the feast of Hanukkah in Jerusalem, in the temple. Well, what is Hanukkah all about? Our Jewish friends will be celebrating that this coming month. And uh, since Jesus observed the Feast of Hanukkah, we as believers in Christ should be fully aware of what was being celebrated. It goes back to the rededication of the temple in Jerusalem after, after the, they had won independence from the Greco-Roman uh, kingdom of Antiochus Epiphanes. This was about 175 years B.C., before Christ. So, uh, what was going on here? 
Well, we should know for a number of reasons, because uh, it involved this Antiochus Epiphanes, who, by the way, well, let me test you on that. Uh, what is uh, one of the main significances of Antiochus Epiphanes from the scriptural point of view? Yes. Uh, isn't he the guy that desecrated the temple? Yes. So, so what? This would be one of the fulfillments of the abomination of desolation. Yeah, and, and so why is that important uh, to us? Or for future prophecy? Well, it could serve as a type or a whatever for the Antichrist to come. It's because that is the same thing, the desecration of the, uh, the temple... Uh, is the same thing that the Antichrist is going to do in the future temple, the tribulation temple in Jerusalem. Uh, so, there is a correlation between Antiochus Epiphanes and the coming Antichrist. Yes? Don't all millennials then point to Antioch Antiochus Epiphanes and they see that's already been fulfilled? The prophecy of the desolation of abomination? Yeah, uh, the the uh, the question is, would, would that not be uh, why the amillennialists and especially the preterists say that uh, the the abomination of desolation has already occurred because that's what um, uh, the uh, what the, uh, the prophet Daniel prophesied and it, it's already happened. However, they must have a problem with the uh, Olivet Discourse of the Lord Jesus because he speaks of the abomination of desolation as being yet future. So uh, it couldn't have been fulfilled with uh, Antiochus Epiphanes. Yet. Is that what you were going to That's the point. That's the point. Okay. Uh, all right. So, Antiochus Epiphanes. Who was this guy? He was the king uh, of uh, what was called Seleucia. Seleucia. Which included Syria and Jordan and Israel and another of those Middle Eastern countries all around in there. Uh, and his capital was in Antioch, Syria. And he was uh, Antiochus III, by the way. He was not the first king Antioch in that area. Now, now the Seleucids were uh, uh, descendant of uh, Seleucus, who was one of the four generals, four generals of uh, Alexander the Great. And when he died, Alexander the Great had no heir. And so his empire, which was vast, although he was only 33 years of age, uh, was so vast that the four generals split it up among themselves. And Sagacus took what we know as the Middle East. Um, Ptolemy took Egypt. And others, uh, two others divided up by uh, the European part and the more like Iran and, and uh, Turkey and over in there. So, uh, here was Antiochus Epiphanes, a descendant of Seleucus, and he was in charge of the Seleucid kingdom, and that included Israel. And for a, a long while, uh, the Seleucid kings were more or less tolerant of Israel and Israel's religion. Alexander the Great himself, uh, when he passed through Israel, could have conquered Jerusalem like he had conquered all these other cities he was conquering, but he passed it by. Uh, and he was greeted by the high priest. As a, as a matter of fact, outside of Jerusalem. 
And uh, he felt this was an omen. And he said, we're not going to bother this city. And passed on by. And to this day, uh, many Jewish boys are named Alex, Alexander, so forth. In honor of Alexander the Great and his uh, benevolent treatment of Israel. But uh, here was Antiochus, uh, the descendant of the, of the Seleucid, Seleucid kings, and he couldn't stand Israel. He was a tremendous anti-Semite. And his goal was to Hellenize Israel. That is, to paganize Israel in the Greek mode. And make Israel uh, just like the pagan uh, Greek cities uh, around them in antiquity. Which included their idolatry. It included their, uh, their philosophy. And uh, also their, their custom in the games. Uh, they would, in every city, they would have uh, a theater and an amphitheater and would uh, have these games, somewhat like Olympic games. <clears throat> but one of the features of uh, the Greek games was nudity. And they performed their games in the nude. And the Israelites could not abide that. And uh, so they refused to go along with that. Plus, Antiochus was going to change the worship in the temple. And he called on all the Levitical priests to join him in worshiping uh, an idol in the temple. And he went so far as to sacrifice a pig uh, on the altar in Jerusalem. Yes. When you say he, do you mean he personally did this? He personally, and it through his minions, and he fanned them out through all Israel. And on one occasion, when one of his minions was in the uh, in one of the towns not too far from Jerusalem, about 20, 30 miles northeast of Jerusalem. He uh, was going through uh, the cities and requiring the priests uh, to participate with him. That is one of the minions of, of Antiochus Epiphanes uh, in this uh, pagan worship. Well, there was a family. There was a priest there in this town who refused to do it. And he was he was slain by the Seleucid soldiers. And he had seven sons. And they banded together and called themselves the Maccabees, which means hammer. Hammers. And they began the revolt against Antiochus Epiphanes to throw off the yoke of oppression and to declare their independence and to uh, indicate uh, uh, their freedom of religion. It was really one of the first episodes of a political statement for the freedom of religion in the world. And the Maccabees revolted against Antiochus Epiphanes, through the Maccabees, and they won. It was, a, it was not a quick walk. It took several years. But finally they threw off the yoke of Antiochus Epiphanes. The warfare was marked uh, by the use of elephants on the part of the Seleucid soldiers against the Israelis. But um, uh, the 
the Jewish guerrilla warfare. It was a guerrilla warfare type thing. Uh, learned how to overcome the elements. They learned that if you can get behind an elephant, you you are okay. <laughs> and uh, they would uh, seek to get behind the ranks of elephants and attack uh, the soldiers from the rear. On that. At any rate, they won. Now, uh, as I say, this this was prophesied in the book of Daniel. In Daniel 8, the prophet Daniel records that uh, from the uh, uh, animal, uh, there, was, there was, of course, Babylon, Persia, and then Greece of the four coming kingdoms, successive kingdoms. And that from the, the third beast, which was Greece, there was a horn, two horns, four horns coming out of his head. And that the uh, swift animal would, would die. But out of his head came the four horns. And there were the four generals, of course, as we learn from history, that that was what was prophesied. And that there was a little horn coming out of one of the four horns, speaking great blasphemous things. And this indeed was fulfilled in Antiochus Epiphanes. And that he would uh, revolt against the Most High, and that he would say blasphemous things, and that he would uh, indeed desecrate the temple. So, we have uh, all of this fulfilled. Uh, in in history, and one of the, it is so so clear that that's what is being described, even though it's in prophetic language. That one of the main reasons why uh, the unbelievers and the liberal theologians uh, do not like Daniel and say Daniel was not a prophet. He did not live in the 500s B.C. He must have lived in the in the 200s or one late 100s, early 100s, uh, because his description of the Antiochus Epiphanes uh, situation and the Jewish revolt against him is so clear and so accurate. Therefore, he couldn't have written it back uh, 300, 400 years before. Well, they deny the Scriptures and the power of God and the prophetic power of God to not only know the future, but to reveal the future uh, before it happens. At any rate, after the revolt, successful revolt, uh, of the uh, Jewish people against the Greco-Roman kings. They declared their independence, but now they had uh, the problem of restoring the temple because it had been desecrated with pagan images, with uh, the sacrifice of a sow upon the altar, and so forth. It had to be cleansed. And that would take eight days The problem is they only had enough oil for the lamp of the temple. One cruise of oil took, that would last eight days. It wouldn't last any longer than that. Everything else had been destroyed. And it was going to... Uh, uh, no, as a matter of fact, they only had enough oil for one day. Excuse me, one day. That was it, one day. And it was going to take eight days to prepare the sacred oil uh, for the temple. But when they lit the lamp, uh, then it turned out they had enough oil to last for another day. And then for the next day, and for the next day, and for eight days in a row. And they considered that to be a miracle. And uh, the 
the motto of Hanukkah is a great miracle happened there. And that was the cruise of oil lasted for eight days. And by that time, they had enough uh, oil prepared that they could use it in, in the temple. And ever since then, they have celebrated uh, the great revolt against uh, the Seleucids and the rededication of the temple uh, by celebrating the feast on the 25th day of Kislev, which is close to our month, December. And they have uh, various uh, celebrations with it. There's the potato pancakes that are made. And uh, that's a very nice delicacy there. There's a special kind of cookie that is prepared and passed out during that time. And in Israel, they greet one another uh, with the phrase, uh, good yontif, uh, good holiday, uh, or Shona Tova, uh, which means uh, good, good holiday as well in Hebrew, and it has become enshrined in the uh, post-Mosaic feasts, along with the Feast of Purim. So uh, that's how Hanukkah came about. That's why the Jewish people celebrate Hanukkah about the same time uh, that Christians celebrate uh, the birth of the Lord Jesus. So... <clears throat> And Jesus celebrated it and gave one of his great orations at that feast. He said, and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch on the feast of de the dedication. Then came the Jews round about him and said to him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. If you're the Messiah, let us know. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give to them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. What a tremendous speech, sermon, message on the day of the Feast of Hanukkah, the Feast of Lights. Well, that's our sugar stick you know, for the evening. Yeah. And I hope it uh, is a blessing to you. And um, thank you so much for uh, this semester. I hope you enjoy the first part of the book of Acts as much as, as I have. And we look forward January 16th uh, online and here in, in Tyler, Texas uh, to uh, begin the second semester on the book of Acts. Yes, uh, <clears throat> When do the local Orthodox Jews celebrate Hanukkah here? The uh, Feast of Hanukkah is on the 25th of Kislev. I'm not sure what day that falls on, uh, on uh, in our calendar this year. But usually it's pretty close to uh, Christmas time. It's not identical to the 25th of December. Does that have anything to do with our selection back yonder of December 25th? Uh, the question is, uh, does, does the fact that the Jews celebrated the 25th, 25th of Kislev have anything to do with the selection of December 25th uh, uh, for the date of the birth of Jesus? I don't know. There may have been some connection there. Most people think it has something to do more with the, the pagan Saturnalia uh, celebration, uh, which occurred at the winter solstice, and that that was, was the occasion for the choosing of it for the uh, date of the birth of Christ. There's nothing in the scriptures about that. Well, was that was our December 25th celebration of Christmas selected during uh, 
far back as the Roman Empire? Yeah, uh, the date, uh, the question is on the date of selection of that. It's usually given as somewhere in the fourth century. And before that, uh, uh, apparently the the Christians had no uh, settled date. Uh, the, the, the scriptures don't say anything about a settled date. Uh, and there's nothing uh, about that. And I'm sure the the uh, uh, Lord's birth was celebrated, but I don't know if they had a particular date until maybe about the 4th century or so. Yes? I looked it up. It's on the 16th of December. This year, Hanukkah. Uh, our, we have our great research team here, Mark Newman. <laughs> And uh, he looked it up and found out that this year, this year, and it doesn't happen every year, uh, this year, Hanukkah falls on December 16th. December what? 16th. 16th. 1-6. Okay. All right.